Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Play Okami HD episode 31. I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester. Well, uh, to start out on our uh, attack on Oni Island, we're given a fire fountain. Well, here it might seem a little tricky, but it turns out we need to re-equip the fire tablet. I didn't think we needed it anymore, but it turns out we do, so now we have it, so here it is. And this little pool here works exactly like any other water thing, pretty much. I'm not really sure how that works. But you use water spout and head on up here and you should be fine. Now we make a real assault upon Oni Island. It's really a castle, but, you know, whatever. It's a castle surrounded by lava. With eyeballs for windows. I mean, that seems pretty... Pretty damn evil to me. Well, we'll go ahead and make our way down here. You could use the lead pads if you want, but I prefer to swim, because a little quicker saves ink, you know. You can explore down here if you want to, but uh, I don't think there's anything over there, because we're not really going over there. We need to make our way to this water spout right here. This, like any other dungeon, has no stray beads in it, so you're not missing anything here. The only thing you'd be missing is some treasures, but we'll see if we can pick up as many as we can along the way. There's a water spout, head up here. And head toward those uncuttable rocks. So you don't have the power slash ability to do so. But first, a new enemy. Two new enemies. This is the Red Ogre and the Blue Ogre. Both of them attack you at once and they're pretty powerful, but not really. If you use Veil of Mist, you take him down one at a time. As a Veil of Mist slows him down considerably, you just keep using that and you can wail on you can wail him away like nothing. This should even the odds, so that way you can make it one-on-one. -on -one. When they turn black and white, use a Power Slash and their mask, is their mask disappears, so that way you can attack them, you know, regularly. Because that mask acts as really good defense, too. I'm gonna run out of ink here. I don't be careful. See, he, I, I think he's ready to... Yeah, there we go. Power Slash! His mask is gone. Now I can just mash square. Use my rosary, and they both go down without a fight. Their floor finisher is something we don't have yet, so we gotta ignore their demon fangs for now. And that's what I'm talking about. Nothing really much in here. I mean, uh, you get a nice view of uh, it looks like the Eye of Sauron or Eye of something over there. Oh no, wait, that's the entrance. So we don't need to go that way. Instead, we make our way inside the castle. Wow. Pretty nice place. I'm all for it. Rally the troops, let's go. The first thing to note is this little thing right here. Hmm, we'll worry about that later. Right now, we have a save point and a merchant. Let's do our business with the merchant here because there's something important that he has that we need. He's kind of doing mutiny right now because he's helping me. Anyway, uh, what we need here is the, the Seven Strike. It is a uh, new glaive. Very useful for this dungeon. Maybe more. Uh, anything else we need to stock up on? I think we're pretty good so far. Eh, I'll get a couple more infinity stones. I think we'll need that. Oh yeah, make sure you get uh, uh, some exorcism slips. Uh, at least two mediums or one large. And that should be good. Uh, they're going to be helpful for later on in this episode, but uh, we'll do our selling business too. No fish, but lots of treasures, I'm sure, so sell those, sell that, 
that, and these, and these, and also those, and this one as well, and that one too, and that one, and then these, and then all those, and then one right there, and we got some money. Great. Ready to go. Head down the corner to the left here. See the strange door that we can't really access right now. We have no means to do so, so we'll just head on through this enclave. This special room here, and... Guardians show up. This is where, uh... This is where the seven strike comes in handy, so we'll go ahead and equip that right now. It's right there. Make it our sub-weapon. Rosary still works good. This grants ink bullet powers, but, uh, as a sub-weapon, all this does is interrupt them when they're, uh, in their, I guess, their invincible mode. Well, it should. Sometimes it does. I actually really hate dealing with these guys. Any any elemental foes, really. But I wonder if I can use a fire here and use it to take out the electricity, and I uh, cannot do so. So, hell with this. I don't feel like dealing with them, so we'll just go with an extra scissor slip. And that's what those do. I didn't have the patience to deal with that. But luckily we got ourselves our lockjaw key, magic key, whatever you want to call it. It's a key that we used to jam into some poor lock's eye socket thing. He's right over here on the other side of the room. Do they ever make locks that aren't alive, the demons? Nah, well. This chest is a little tricky. Go down and then jump. Double jump. There you go. You get a bullhorn. Great. And head on down here. We get something called uh, the Labyrinth of Torment. Sounds brooding and mysterious. I, I don't know. This is the uh, one of the many gimmicks of this dungeon. There's a series of small races that are presented before us. Don't make a mess of it, huh? I wonder what that means. Make a mess of it. Get me to make a mess of it. Nah, I don't know. Hey, at least monsters have a coat of honor and all that. And now a new character. <laughs> Haunted Demon Slip. Toby is a sentient prayer slip. Notice that he looks exactly like the slips Rao had in the sunken ship. The kanji on his body reads, Hoi no chi, which means, mind your body, preserve your life. Also notice the eyeball on the slip. It looks an awful lot like the windows in the Oni Island castle. Alright, we already read the sign, so here's how the races work. You step on this switch, and that paper's gonna go through that gate, and you gotta beat him before he gets there, otherwise it's gonna close on you. It's just like Dompe from the gatekeep from uh, Ocarina of Time, to make another Zelda reference. So the idea here is to kind of get a running start, maybe dash into the little plate, so that way you can get a good running start, and you can be able to beat him easily. And there you go. When the gate turns green, the race is over, and you get your money. That's one race down, and I think there's five more to go here. And they get progressively harder and trickier with each passing time we do this. Uh, 
This one's going to be a little bit tricky to do, but uh, just take some precise platforming and you shouldn't have any problems. But let's see how I do. Running start, go! I think it's easier to go on the right first because uh, the jumps are much more evenly spaced. And there you go. Just like that. Alright, there's a chest behind these stairs here. Nothing all that important, just a crystal. Moving on. Alright, a cat statue, that's a little tricky. See, it uh, brings you up here, but then, aha, there's something blocking your way! So you just go around the other way there. One of those stranger brush techniques, I gotta admit. Moving on still. To our third race. Yeah, this part isn't really dangerous or difficult, but if you do one trick, it becomes incredibly easier. This terrace past here. Jump. Jump. Dash. There you go. Nothing to it. Just like that. Right to the fourth race. I don't mean to make a bad pun, but uh, this one's a little difficult because there's nothing that really gives you a real strict advantage, so you have to rely on your own jumping capabilities. So, uh, needless to say, in this passage of saws, you're going to be cutting it pretty close. Let's get started. Guys, just keep your jumping, cut the corners as much as you can. I don't think Veil of Mist does anything, but hey, let's give it a try. Aha, it does slow him down. He still moves pretty dang fast, though. That's probably one of the most difficult races that you'll do here. Well, in this dungeon, at least. But it gives you a lack of wear set right onto the next race. Passes of Demonic Wheels. This one I find it's easier to use uh, Veil of Mist as you're going. So we get our running start. Here we go. Well, I guess Veil of Mist doesn't do anything. I'm gonna fail this one. Yeah, let's go from side to side and oh crud! You're not beating me! Ah! Oh! Crap. Luckily, if you fail, you don't have to go all the way back, it just drops you right down to the beginning. Lame! Let's try it again. Here we go! This kind of goes from side to side, you gotta... It's not that difficult, really. For some reason, I thought Veil of Mist did something. I guess it didn't. There you go! Another chest. Something that we'll need for the next race. Chamber of Delay. This one is a bit tricky. You go ahead and make your way, and then there's three guardians you have to fight here. You go ahead and do it yourself. I mean, the seven strike seems to work pretty well. Your seven strike rosary combo. 
you can attack what's in front of you and also get those guys as well. But uh, the problem is, well, after you beat him, you have to go through this screen, and it's like, oh my god, dude, come on, hurry up! But if you really had a hard time, like I did when trying for this, you could have used the exorcism slip that would have taken him out immediately. But I had to do it the pro way. Ah, yeah. And it gives us a coral fragment. It's a job well done. This part's a little tricky, too. There's a death pit down there. These laser samurais that are shooting lasers. Ah! They kind of hurt. Platforms that you can that you can step on. And also, over here, you have these spears that go up a little high. So you have to get a pretty good double jump if you want to clear them. But you got a place where you can heal yourself, so... Not too bad, I suppose. Let's see what we can find. This one I'm just gonna skip. We need to worry about him. Nothing really over there. Okay. The chest over there I'm gonna go ahead and pick up. It gives us a golden peach. I don't think we need, really. Oh, shit. The first jump has to be just up, and then the double jump is the one that clears it. You gotta be careful with these things, though. You can disable them for a little bit by power slashing them, but it doesn't last for long. I'm not sure what that did. I think that opened the door on the other side of the room. So we'll make our way over there after getting this chest. Which is just a pearl. Once we go to the next area in season three, there's gonna be a lot more treasures that are worth a lot more. Ow! Yeah, disable, disable that guy while I'm cutting across. Ow! Also worth mentioning, if you fall into this death pit, you go back down to where you fell, not to like the very beginning. Oh, I made it. Hmm. So yeah, not really difficult, just kind of tricky. Here we got... Whoa. Suddenly we have a blue Cyclops. Make sure you have your 7 Strike equipped, because the... When you're in the air, that thing works incredibly. You sail across the air and you just take him down. Oh, it just works beautifully. Doesn't really work too well when he comes into his humanoid form, though. But the seven strike does lock into him automatically. And does a lot of damage. Looks great. Shit damage though. Not really much around here. You know, this is a. Uh, I don't know what this pool is for, really. I mean, I guess that looks nice. Make our way through these doors. We got ourselves an origin mirror, if you want to save. We got ourselves another lockjaw here, so... Next place to go here. And... Another race with Toby. But we'll be taking care of that next time on Let's Play Okami HD.